everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So it's time to go through my July reading wrap up. I read eight books in total in July so kind of towards the lower end of average. I usually read between eight to twelve books although actually thinking about it I haven't read twelve books in a month in a really long time. But yeah I read eight books in total and it was a bit of a mixed bag. There were some books that were very close to being five stars but then there were also some books that definitely weren't five stars. So we're gonna get straight into it. If you're new to my channel then the way that I usually structure my wrap-ups is I talk about the books that I read that are part of series first and then I go on to talk about the standalones that I read but there's always timestamps in the description just in case you would like to skip around. The first book that I have on my list is The Labyrinth's Heart by M.A. Carrick. This I gave 4.5 stars. It was so close to being a five stars. It's the final book in the Rook and Rose trilogy which is a new favourite series for me I think. The second book was phenomenal but this book I think in some ways it was too neat in the way that it wrapped up everything and there were some moments that I thought were a little bit sloppy and lazy in the way that they were handled. There are characters who are keeping secrets from one another and it was almost like the authors realised in the final book that they needed certain characters to know certain information so the way that those characters characters found out about certain bits of information. Obviously I'm being really vague. It just felt lazy the way that certain reveals were handled and it was fine because as the reader I already knew what was going on. I just think it could have been a little bit smoother but I still loved the characters. I thought the characters in this were so complex and multi-layered and I would really recommend this if you like political fantasy, especially political fantasy that has a lot of really detailed and intricate world building. This series has several magic systems which can be a little bit confusing at first but there is a glossary that you can refer to and I never struggled actually. Once I got past the first half of the first book I never really struggled to grasp what was going on at a particular time. The setting is also really immersive and the atmosphere is great so yeah this was a five star series for me even though the final book just about missed the mark. The next book on my list is When the Moon Hatched by Sarah A. Parker which is the first book in what is going to be called the Moonfall series. The second book was actually announced this week. It doesn't come out until October 2025 which is frustrating. Kind of like my reading experience with this book. I know that I'm going to have to reread this book at some point before the sequel but that's okay because generally I did really enjoy this. I gave it a 4.5 stars. It could have been five stars and I think on reread it might get that that five stars from me but the main issue that I had with this was I hated the main character and I'm probably being a little unfair because there is a reason why the main character is the way that she is. She's very focused on revenge and that can come across as recklessness and it was infuriating sometimes the way that she went about things. However having now read the whole book I think there was a purpose to that so if I were to reread it I think that I would be looking at this in a different way and the experience would be a little bit different. The writing also took me a long time to get used to. I think you are going to know within the first few chapters whether you're going to get along with this writing style because it's very poetic which isn't my favourite type of writing style however I felt like that added to the atmosphere and I did feel immersed in this world which is what I want from a fantasy romance. I don't just want the focus to be on the romantic relationship. I want to feel like the author has also dedicated time to developing the world and this was such an interesting world. It was very mysterious but magical and obviously there are dragons as you can tell probably from the cover. I read this recently for the dragon fantasy vlog that I did which I'll leave linked but yeah I really liked the dragons in this as well and how there's different species and they live in different parts of the world because they're more suited to different types of climates. I thought that it was really well done. It won't be for everyone and I wouldn't recommend it to everyone but I think if you do like fantasy romance that's heavy on the world building in then this could work for you. Moving on to the standalones that I read in July and first up we have The Museum of Ordinary People by Mike Gale. This I had to double check my rating on. I gave it four stars but it's probably more like a 3.5. This is the fourth book that I've read by this author and I think it's my least favourite so far. Not because of the writing or the story. I thought the concept was really interesting. It's basically 
about this woman who is grieving after her mom passed away a year ago and she has this set of encyclopedias that she took from her mom's old house and she can't bear to get rid of this set of encyclopedias even though they're taking up room in the flat and her boyfriend is getting annoyed she can't bring herself to just throw them in the rubbish bin so a friend of a friend tells her about this place called the Museum of Ordinary People which is essentially a warehouse that was set up by this guy as a place where people could take items like this set of encyclopedias that have a story behind them but they don't hold any monetary value so it's not like you could sell them on or anything like that. This was quite emotional in places and I really appreciated the discussions around grief and how we attach memories to items and all of that stuff I thought was done really well. It did make me cry at one point so I didn't want to rate it too low however I hated the main character's relationship drama. I found it really tedious to read. She has this partner who is not very supportive but also she's not really communicating with him and it's just a mess and I hated it. It was boring in my opinion so yeah I think that's why I gave this four stars but it probably was more like a 3.5. Next on my list is The Weight of Blood by Tiffany D. Jackson which is a YA horror that I gave five stars. One of the best audiobooks that I've ever read and I think for my review on Goodreads literally all I said was if it has a full cast audio audiobook narration then you know I'm probably going to give it five stars although actually that wasn't the case for a later book that I have on my list but yeah I really enjoyed this I thought it was really well done it's a Carrie retelling which is a book that I've read I think it was one of the first Stephen King books that I read back when I was a teenager so I'm familiar with the story but I can't remember the details I've also never watched an adaptation I think there's a few film adaptations actually now the story does follow the original quite closely however the main difference is the main character is mixed race and the bullying that she goes through is related to her classmates finding out that she's mixed race because previously she was passing as white. The bullying that she goes through is horrific and it was really difficult to read at times. What I liked was the multimedia element. So there's this person who's making a podcast of what happened on prom night in this town and just the way that the different voices voice actors narrated the characters and how it felt like I was listening to a real podcast. It was phenomenal, really well done and I would recommend it. I think this is actually the second book that I've read by this author and I'm pretty sure I read their first book via audio and also gave it five stars so I feel like I need to look up <laughs> more of their audiobooks because clearly that is a format that's working for me. Apparently I read a lot of audiobooks in July because the next book on my list is another audiobook that also had a full cast narration that I also gave five Five stars so again I would recommend this one. It's called Carla by Colin Walsh and this is literary fiction that also has a mystery. It follows a group of people, these three friends, who aren't really friends anymore, they've kind of drifted apart but when they were teenagers they were part of this friendship group where one of the girls went missing so there were three guys, three girls and over this one summer they were really really close. However this girl Carla went missing and she's never been found. Some people think that maybe she ran away because she was very free-spirited however throughout the book you learn what happened to her but it's not really about what happened. It is very slow and it builds up very gradually and it's more of a character study. It's more about the events leading up to what happened and how it happened and the secrets that people keep in small towns and I thought the atmosphere was really well done. I thought that each narrator really brought their character to life. One of the narrators, or I should say one of the POVs, is actually told in second person perspective as if you're listening to one of the guy's internal monologues and I thought that was really powerful and really effective and it was just really well done. Next on my list is The Sky on Fire by Jen Lyons which is a standalone fantasy. It's a fairly new release. It only came out in July. I had an arc of it through NetGalley and I was really excited to give it a go because I've heard amazing things about the Chorus of Dragon series by Jen Lyons. That has been on my radar for a while so I was interested to see what the writing style was like and I gave this one three stars in the end. It was fine and I think I would recommend it to certain people. It just wasn't what I expected it to be and it wasn't what I wanted it to be. It's set in a world that is split in two so you have the Skylands which
which are on top of the mountains and they are ruled by dragons and then you also have the deep which is where you find like rivers and jungles and things like that. The main character is called Anarod and she was from the Skylands originally however she was executed except she wasn't really executed because she survived and she's been living in the deep ever since. However she ends up getting roped into this heist. This actually reminded me a lot of The Hobbit in that you're following this reluctant main character who's drawn into this heist where they're trying to steal a dragon's treasure or I think they call it a hoard. This drops you straight into the action and then it doesn't really stop until you get to the end. It's very fast paced and I think that's why I struggled because I really wanted some quieter moments where you could see the characters interacting and developing their relationships. There was an attempt at a found family but it didn't really work for me. There were actually two side characters that for the longest time I thought were the same person because they really lacked depth and yeah it was fine it just wasn't what I wanted. I think I wanted it to feel more intense but instead it felt like this fun fantasy adventure so mixed feelings. I did really like the world and the society. There were some really interesting ideas and I would be interested in reading other books within this world if the author decides to publish them. This just didn't quite work for me. Next up we have yet another audio book and that is Do Not Disturb by Frieda McFadden. This I gave three stars and to be honest I was probably being a bit generous. I really enjoyed the audiobook experience. I found that it motivated me to go for my runs which is why I listened to it. The writing was what I expected. It's very conversational and I find that that does work really well on audio. Also the synopsis for this was really intriguing. It follows a woman who kills her husband and then goes on the run but it's snowing outside and she has to pull over into this motel. Obviously I don't want to go into spoilers so I won't say much more than that but yeah this was fine. There were a lot of twists and turns but to be honest a lot of them didn't make any sense and then I hated the epilogue. That's all I have to say about that one. I'm probably going to read more Frieda McFadden books because the audiobooks are really addictive but yeah I don't really recommend her books because it's not like I think they're actually good. They're just really addictive. The final book on my list is Keep It In The Family by John Mars which unfortunately is my least favourite John Mars book that I've read so far. I gave it two stars and I think this is it for me. I need to stop trying to read John Mars's backlist because I haven't enjoyed any of his more psychological or domestic thrillers. I really like The One and any book set within that dystopian world but these type of popcorn thrillers just are not working for me. This is incredibly dark and his other books have also been dark but I think I like the darkness combined with the social commentary whereas this is like a popcorn thriller. It's basically following this couple who buy a house and it turns out that this house has an incredibly dark past and that's all I can really say without spoilers but you're following this couple but also other perspectives including the point of view of a serial killer who is targeting children. So it's meant to be uncomfortable but I didn't enjoy reading it. Probably didn't help that I was listening to the audiobook so I was having to hear certain stuff described. It was just yeah not a nice experience so I gave this two stars and I probably wouldn't recommend it. It has a decent average rating on Goodreads but yeah this one was just not for me. That does bring me to the end of the wrap up though so thank you for watching if you made it this far. Let me know in the comments what your favourite book was of July and if you've read any of the books that I talked about in this wrap up. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and click subscribe if you would like to see more videos from me but otherwise I will see you next time. Bye.